In this video, I'm going to um, give examples for you to practice on naming uh, a means. And so the best way to approach this is um, I've drawn a structure here for you. You should pause the video, try to name it, and then come back and I'll go through the process uh, of naming this molecule correctly. Okay, so this molecule is an amine, and I know that because amines have a structure in which you have a nitrogen atom shown in the middle here that I've just underlined, uh, connected to uh, three different things, um, and that could be um, uh, all hydrogens, it could be one R group uh, and two hydrogens, it could be two R groups and one hydrogen as we see here, or it could have three R groups. And so once you recognize it as an amine, uh, that kind of gets your parent name, and so our family name. And so that's is an amine that we're going to be uh, naming. Uh, the next thing you do is you find the biggest group uh, hanging on that nitrogen. And in fact, I have an ethyl group here on the right that I'm circling. That's an ethyl group. Uh, underneath the nitrogen is just a hydrogen and on the left hand side of the nitrogen that is also an ethyl group and so uh, the biggest group is an ethyl group uh, there's two of them and so the nomenclature for that is diethyl because there are two amine so it is a diethyl amine uh, molecule and so that's the proper naming Okay, here's our second example. Um, again, uh, pause the video and try to name this molecule, and then come back, and I will go through the process of naming it. Okay, um, I can again see that this is a, an amine, because I see that nitrogen connected, and in this case, it's connected to three R groups. And so, because I know the family name is an amine, and go ahead and give the name an amine. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to find the largest group attached to that nitrogen. I have uh, two methyl groups that I've just circled. And I have up here um, an isopropyl group hanging on. And so the largest group is an isopropyl group. And so that goes as part of the name, and so it's going to be isopropyl amine. Uh, you always put the largest group right in front of the amine. And then I have two methyl groups. Um, in naming substituents or groups on nitrogens, you don't number them. You actually just uh, mention that they are attached to the nitrogen, and the way you do that is by writing a, an NN. Uh, and the reason I have two there is because I have two methyl groups. And so it's NN dimethyl isopropyl amine. So that would be the correct uh, naming of that molecule. Okay, here's the next structure we're going to try to name. Uh, it's gone up a little bit in complexity, uh, but the process of naming it is still the same. Uh, I'll give you a moment to uh, name this molecule, or pause the video, and then come back and I'll go through the process of naming it. Okay, we have another example of an amine, um, and so because it is an amine, the family name um, is amine. And now what we want to do is to uh, define the group that goes in front of the word amine. We have to find the largest group uh, present. So let's find our, let's circle our three groups. Um, in this case, we only have two groups attached. One is an H, and we don't really have to name the, if it's just a hydrogen. 
but I see a three carbon group right there. I see a five carbon group right there. Uh, the three carbon group, that'll be named as propyl. And the five carbon ring structure here is cyclo, and it's got five carbons, so it's a cyclo pentyl group. So we have a cyclopentyl group there, and so this amine is going to be a cyclopentyl amine. Again, we put the largest group in front of the word amine, and so that's a five carbon group, so that will go there. And then the other group we have attached uh, to this molecule is a propyl group. Uh, we name it sort of like naming a substituent, and so therefore uh, this is going to get that group, the propyl groups, attached to the nitrogen. And so we'll call it uh, N propyl cyclopentyl amine is the proper name. The big group we name and that we put in front <coughs> that we put in front of the amine uh, doesn't get the N designation. It's uh, kind of like the parent name of a molecule. And so we don't have to put the, the group on there, the number, the N uh, designation on there. Also, the space in between propyl and cyclopentyl, that shouldn't be there. That should all be crushed together. Um, I just didn't go, f I went too far to the left when I was writing that N propyl group. But that would be N uh, dash propyl cyclopentyl amine, all one word. Okay? Uh, because uh, the H uh, up here, uh, we don't name that as a substituent, that's just understood. And so the, the proper name is what we have uh, down below. Okay, now we'll try one the other way where we give, I give you the name and we try to draw it. Uh, so go ahead and try to draw this structure and then I'll come back and help you and kind of go through that process of drawing the structure. Okay, when I name a molecule, um, I always start... Um, or when I draw a molecule, I always start on the right-hand side of the word and work my way to the left. I find it easier that way. Um, notice um, I first find the family name, which I see here is an amine. Um, so right off the bat, I know I'm going to have a nitrogen with three things attached to it. Um, the next, I go a little bit further to the left, and I see butyl. Um, uh, butyl is the largest group because it's right next to the amine, and so... What I can do is it doesn't matter where I put it, I can just pick a spot. And so I'll just go he in one spot here and I'll start drawing butyl. Butte is four carbons long. And so as long as I have the correct number of hydrogens attached to each, and sometimes I mess that up, but as long as I have the correct number of hydrogens attached, uh, we have a butyl group attached to that nitrogen. Now then I go... Um, to the left one more time, and I see the rest of what I need. Uh, I see NN diethyl, which means that I have ethyl groups on um, connected to N twice. Good thing I have two spots left, so this is all going to fit nicely. Um, and so I can just add ethyl groups to this molecule, and voila, there's the correct structure of this uh, molecule. Okay, and here's a final one to try to draw. So there's the uh, name of the molecule. Uh, you should give it a try at drawing, and then pause the video, come back, and I will go through the naming, or the drawing of this molecule. Okay, so again, I start on the right, when I draw a compound or molecule, I start on the right-hand side and work my way left. I see that it's an amine, so I immediately know I'm going to have a nitrogen with three things attached to it. I go to the second or the isobutyl portion of this molecule. So there's the isobutyl portion. On one of the nitrogens, I have an ethyl group. So I will draw that in. And on the 
other attachment to the nitrogen, I have a tert butyl group. And there's the proper structure.